hi, it's Gretchen, and like I promised, I am starting on this journey of keeping it real. That's going to be the name of this little show. I live on the Key Peninsula. This is all about my film journeys, R-E-E-L, uh, film and digital and movie. Not, not, well, it's the journey of learning how to do this kind of film, um, but I'm taking you through on my photography too. So I did my first live last night with Ecamm. Had no music, no intro, nothing, just kind of went and figured out one thing. Haven't gotten much further than that, figuring that one thing, and this is guaranteed to be a bumpy ride. But I always was up for bumpy rides, so stick around. <laughs> like I said, my name is Gretchen Shepherd. I am a photographer and uh, have been a photographer for a long time. My grandmother gave me a camera when I was 10 and I bought my first camera myself when I was 11, an Instamatic, a Kodak Instamatic 104. And um, it's been a journey ever since. But today, I'm working on this journey of other things here. Let me get my microphone over here. I bet that. All right, <clears throat> so um, last night I had some folks on um, from various different groups, some fluid art folks, and I'm going to see if I can figure out if I can see if this is gone live there on there. I'm actually looking for my channel. So here's the thing. Um, let me look here, trying too many things at once. Yeah, so there we go. And <laughs> video. Okay, so trying to work all of these things, get them to step by step. And as I mentioned last night, when it, I got my one of my cameras, recent cameras, it took me forever. It was very complex. And this is no different. And it's not a journey I expect to know right off the bat. And um, so we're going to see how it goes. And I got to turn the volume down on this. Whoa. There we go. Okay. Well, at least I know you can see me. That's cool. Oops, but it's on the wrong camera. Is it on that one? <laughs> it is supposed to be on that one. Oh, well, so I'll talk to this one. <laughs> All right, first off, I need to learn how to switch cameras and Doc can yell at me at another time. Sprite and Close that. That's not what I wanted to do. And then, uh, Chrome, I don't want to be on camera. Camera, I should be on this one. There we go. Got the right cam. <gasps> All right. I just at least figured out how to switch a camera. That is major. So last night, um, when I was on, there uh, was on with some fluid artists who I'd been watching on a live that they were doing and Angie Mason was on and some other people were on. It was really great fun to see all of them. And then Sammy came in and it was a, a nice blend of people coming back and forth. So I said I was going to come on again tonight and had I learned anything and what was I going to do and take you on this journey? Not much more. So I'm not going to stay on long, but I did promise um, Angie Mason, uh, Fluid Art, Angie, that I would share 
a um, couple pictures. She was doing this fluid art and it reminded me of the giant sea stars that we have here in the Pacific Northwest. You know, starfish are one thing. Sometimes they're like this big around and some get a little bigger and they usually have, you know, like five legs. That's a starfish. We have these things, some people call them sun stars, some people call them sea stars, everything that just, and they're big. And they have lots of different legs. And she was doing this very cool art thing that had them. And I thought, well, I, ha I told her I had a picture and she wanted to see some. So what I'm going to attempt to do is share my screen in Lightroom and show these pictures. It's going to be herky-jerky because I don't know how to do it seamlessly yet. And, but I told her I would show her. So we're going to switch to screen share. Yikes, there's my bear. Now that's not, um, <laughs> that's not what we're doing. Let's see, screen share and see if it does this. And... We're going to switch to Lightroom. So you see the bear there? That's my desktop. Ah, yay. Okay, I pulled that up. All right. So I just popped up Lightroom. And, um, oh, that's where it shows me. Nice. Okay. I can see what I'm doing. But I don't think you'll you see me while I'm doing this because I haven't figured out that part of it yet. So these are, um, I can drop the thumbnails down much smaller. I have in this folder alone, I have um, 845 pictures of beach and sea life. And so I know that they're in here if I categorize them in any way, shape or form correctly. I have some sea stars to show her. So I found them. There's one up here. That's what we call a sea star. Here's another one. And then these are um, from this, the collars from moon snails, which is this cool kind of big snail. Uh, that we don't find as many. I mean, you can tell that there's been a lot of changes in temperatures and pollution and what. There used to be very prevalent, these moon snails, and they leave this very cool sand collar behind them. And then this is a not so small that's a regular uh, starfish. Um, so he's not so small. One, yeah. But this, Angie, if you're around and um, see him, let me see if anybody's there. Um, Angie, this is what we call a sea star or I call sun star. So what can I do for that? It's an old picture. Let's see, this is a JPEG. This is taken in 2009. Yeah, I, I went through a phase where I thought I should be shooting JPEG when I first started with some digital things and that was not right. So I'm gonna go into my develop section here in this and let me get full screen here. There we go. <clears throat> So I am in the develop and I'm going to drop the highlights down on this puppy and I'm going to take the shadows up. Uh -uh. I'm going to drop the exposure down just overall. But you see that kind of affects the whole thing and um, it's not the sharpest picture so it's not really that great or worth doing on but I want to try this new Lightroom masking tool on this. And I'm going to select the subject and let it select subject. And have it show the overlay. How well did it do? It did pretty well. There are parts of it that it didn't need to select, like this seaweed here and this shell. I don't need, so I'm going to subtract off of that with a brush. I will take those away. I don't need that. I don't need the seaweed. I 
first is a little pig. And it got also in between I saw somebody do this. What did they do? They took the subject and maybe invert it and then add it in with a brush over this. There we go. And then I can do this. And it is on auto mask, so it's not going to. Oh, no, that's not, that's not right. So what I'm doing here, you see what I'm, I'm putting it in here in between, because it's sometimes easier to do it this way because boom, boom. I want it to not, what I, the effect I'm going to do, I don't want it to show up on the actual starfish, but I have to make a mask. So now I'm going to take that and invert it back. And nope, that didn't work either. Okay. That was not right. So I'm going to go back and subtract. Let's just start over when you do this. When you do something dumb, you just start over. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to subtract. And I'm going to subtract with a brush. I'm going to subtract right in here. Oh, yes. This was easier. See what I'm doing is in between the st starfish legs or the sun star, sea star's legs. I'm taking the mask out because I don't want what I'm going to do to be, I want it to only be on the C star. Now I'm on my computer, so I'm having to I do the, I have a mask. I could, uh, I have tools that I could use a pen with if I did this, which would probably uh, for a lot of people are is, is much easier for them, but it's a new tool I would have to learn. And right now, I just want to get this done. I don't want to, you know. Okay, here we go. So now I'm going to take the overlay off. And now what I really want to do is I want to increase the saturation on this and the clarity on this guy. The sharpness of him needs to come up. His highlights need to come way down. Way, 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 way down. Okay, and his shadows, I'm going to use exposure, oh, no, for the con contrast, and then I'm going to dehaze him a bit, yeah, okay, and the texture of him, now that makes a pretty cool looking Sea star. You can see much more about him and much more the way he was. And I'll be done with that one. Then I'm going to add another mask. And this one I'm going to, um, since there's no sky, I'm going to take a new mask. I'm going to select the subject again. See if it'll learn this time better. Oh, nope. Oh, I know what I can do. Oh, hang on. Delete that. Delete, delete, delete. Oh, 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 oh. Dump that. Uh, delete mask two. I need to duplicate mask one. That's what I need to do. Duplicate mask one. And now I'm going to invert it. Nope. Oh, I, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to, 
There we go. So I can invert it. Yes. Yes. Oops. This is where I want it inverted. Invert it there. No. No. Maybe this is the one I want it to invert. No, 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 no. Okay, I'll go back to this one. All right, here I'm on this one. I got it pretty good. And then I just need to add a bit more onto this mask again for the brush. So, Angie. I don't know. Is anybody watching? Hi, Angie. Oh, Angie, you are. Oh, my gosh. That's, yes, this is the starfish. And so what I'm doing is um, I am editing it. This is a picture that I took back in 2009 when we lived in downtown Edmonds. And we lived right, we were renting a condo right on the beach. And so I'm trying to get this to do what I want it to do here. Come on. But my computer is so... I'm ordering a new computer. But for now, that doesn't mean I can't do this. So the red mask, Angie, so what I'm doing here is I'm putting this over um, the areas that I want to affect next. I already affected the, the giant uh, sea star, OK? And now what I'm going to do I'm show, is I'm going to do some stuff with this, the background, because the background doesn't help the starfish show up very much. So if I bring the color way back on that, I need to make it a little less clear. Or really? I'm going to bring the highlights and the contrast. Bring the exposure down. Oh, yay. Cool. Uh, maybe. All right. Um, yeah. I wanted to just have that background not be quite so similar to that other, the, st the sea star. Okay. So, like I said, this is not the best picture. This is kind of old and it's not my finest hour of stuff. But at least it gives you a hint. And Angie, yes, he's a big one. <laughs> Hi, Angie. Hi, Gloria. Oh, my gosh. Good to see you guys. Yes, that's a giant starfish. Um, he's probably about, um, I would say, a foot and a half, maybe two feet across in diameter. Um, they got pretty big and I'm going to take this. Here's another one I'll show you. Um, these guys, uh, as I was saying earlier, the, um, I'll take this color. Where's my color dropper? There we go. Yeah. And, um, then do the saturation. Here we go. So they turn really orange. Some of them are orange, some of them are red. You see purple ones. Don't very often see blue ones. I haven't seen that. But um, they have these just cool aspects to them. And they'll, they move pretty sl slowly, but they do move. Um, this, like I said up here, is the color from a sand color, uh, a, uh, what's called a moon snail. And they make this, uh, oh, gosh, I don't know how to say what they do. Um, they secrete uh, in the the snail secretes this thing that may, turns the sand into this collar, and you can actually pick that up, and it's almost like this soft, pliable, like like clay. If you've ever worked with clay and done anything on a potter's wheel, and you've uh, you know right when you you've gotten it full, and the 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 if you've done it on a wheel and it's come up or you've made it and it's pretty thin and it's like that wobbly kind of stage, that's what that feels like. And it tears pretty easily. 
Um, I think I have a piece here that's torn. Yeah, there's another piece that's torn. Um, but here's a regular sea, uh, uh, starfish. And they come along. None of these pictures have been edited. Oh, there they are, too. This is kind of cool. Uh, dehaze. There we go. Yep. Now go over. So, like I said, these were from 2009. And um, I had really just picked up digital cameras again uh, from, from film a few years before that and hadn't done a whole lot of it other than taking pictures of a crab hiding underneath the eelgrass. And there we go, but, oh, yep. Anyway, this was, see, that's part of the ferry dock that they would, uh, the old ferry dock was here in, in Edmonds, and the um, when the tide came in, the sea stars would be all over these barnacles and everything like this. This was actually kind of, um, where the pick where the sea stars were or right across over this sound this is in kingston but it would be like right oh here i am this is terrible this is me a long time ago there's the ferry and there's the beach and just right over here when the tide was out was where i saw those sea stars and yeah it was a pretty nice place to live but it was a condo that we rented and yeah that was good more mud things let's see if there's anything else that you want to see um canada geese oh you want to see the canada geese yes we oh gosh those guys are crazy they are nuts i have i had a picture i think on my website called angry geese instead of you know like um angry birds it was angry geese that they were just they can get kind of crazy and um yeah but and they'll come right they're very brave like what are you doing taking our picture um, yep, sunsets. We had a good time there. Um, oh, there, yeah, and there's this is it's kind of cool because this is that eelgrass that's my husband walking out there. But these three scuba divers out here, so in Edmonds here in Washington, um, where we used to live, this is an underwater park, so it's kind of right next to the ferry dock and but this all these buoys set out so when you go down underneath there's streets set up and there's things that all have grown up and around the the barnacles and the fish and scuba divers go out there quite frequently here is here's another one of those um moon snails you guys and that's one in black and white and here's another one with some eelgrass and then some alternate stuff I did for some I did a super high contrast kind of mm, crazy sort of picture I was trying some things but yeah oh that's that's not that's a different beach you know we live in a gorgeous place there's beaches everywhere the eelgrass I was looking to see if I had any more of the well there's a crab not a crab any more where if I go back to library I can look and get back to grid view see if there's anything else that fits with what we were talking about I don't see oh this is kind of cool yeah I kind of went a little HDR on that boy you can tell I did that a while ago hmm I may need to revisit that and fix the colors on that that's a little bit a little bit psychedelic but that's okay it's it's pretty close to true colors this is this is true colors right there very fun so angie and gloria and you guys that you could get really super cool ideas for your fluid art um and things you can see inspiration from where i get inspiration from what you guys do and then uh it matches up with things like this so some of the color combinations would be kind of fun i i think that they would be fun what else is here is that i don't know what that is oh that's that i can never remember the name of this little animal if i can find a better picture of it yeah it's this weird kind of um not an anemone um oh 
I'm not good with that. My husband always has those names. But yeah. It's kind of almost like a, it's like almost like a sea urchin type thing. Yeah. Pretty crazy, huh? <laughs> Pretty crazy. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah, it does remind you of Cosmos. That, that is true. Um, this, this is kind of like Cosmos stuff in the eelgrass. But what is that? Oh, that's just a clam. Anyway, so ladies and everybody, I have not figured out, like I said, I haven't figured out a whole lot more. Oh, this is barnacles and rust and eelgrass. This is cool. Um, I, haven't, I haven't figured out a whole lot more to do on how to do on ecam, but at least I got it so I could do this so far. And um, from the snail, <laughs> you got inspiration from a snail. I know, isn't it cool? Um, and this was a piece that I thought between the the barnacles and the the rust of the pillars from there has been nails and, and metal and then the wood and then eelgrass I ended up doing this piece which I kind of like so it started out if you go see the progression okay I'll go back here we'll go back to here and take it into develop and let you see so the the progression and what I kind of see so as I was walking underneath here I start to see these colors and what it goes with and where is the next one come on there and you start to see it so I wait for tides and stuff this is actually under the ferry dock um, if you look in the background there you can see the ferry boat <laughs> It was fairly low tide. And from there, I saw these cool colors and the way the textures went. And so I got a little closer up and did a close up on one and did a close up again. And then ended with this as my final piece. Now, to be quite honest, uh, that's just a clam. <laughs> you like that? That's just a clam. <laughs> that's just a clam. Um, to be quite honest, this is, um, it's blurry here. It's, I, I missed some things. This was back in 2009. There were some things I still was working on and I, I didn't pay attention to. And, um, I was on a, it was a rounded surface. I had a fairly wide open f-stop and it made my depth of field very shallow, which I know I've been doing this for a long time, but I, I wasn't paying attention to it. Wasn't paying attention to those details. So as a result, the whole image has like, if I zoom in, it has some blurriness and right here, um, the place was where it's tack sharp or like it's not tack sharp here. It's okay in some places. So it's not, it's not a, it's not an award winner. That's for sure. But it is is something it's it's a learning experience so um it's what i do and oh, kelp kelp here's another one of those guys i think is this what, am i in big screen now oh i said oh here yeah this is kind of like another um like a sea urchin kind of sea anemone type thing that they're almost like a sea mushroom i don't know what they're called again crazy kind of things we see all over the place oh look at this guy isn't he goop Ooh. They're just, some of them are just gross, but that's okay. And the seaweed and the kelp. What's this? Just, oh, that's just a leaf. 
in there. And you get these really cool colors. They're actually, that's the way they are. I'm running through things here. Um, yeah. So that was what I wanted to show you. And I told you I would pull it out, Angie, and I found it. And that's what I did. Yay! Perfect to emulate in a painting. Yes, yes. Um, it, it, it is really interesting to take some of these. I, I do take some of them and apply painterly type effects to them. Um, like this, well, I like this one as it is. This is just, um, this is where I, I, when I talk about finding the beauty hidden in plain sight, most people walk right by this kind of stuff. For me, it has a, a just such a, a, by, by lowering that depth of field, although it should have had, oh, I know why. My ISO is at a 5,000. And I was taking this from a distance. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, very crazy. I wonder I'll have to look into what I was doing on this one. Who knows where I was. There was a, a marine sanctuary not too far from where we lived and um, always came up with a lot of really cool things. And the ferry boat, come on in. And the sailboats. And the driftwood. And the rocks. Yeah. It's just a fun place. It's um, Northwest Living. Yep. Oh, oh, there he is. There's one. There we go. Cormorant. Yes, this is... This must be closer to where I am now. These... Let's see, when were these taken? Um, info, info. Oh, okay. 2016, I wonder where I was. <laughs> Don't know where I was. It's kind of fun to go through these. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this has been, um, yeah. So this is one of my pieces here that I ended up affecting it so that I ended up with these. I, li I like to do abstracts a lot. I really love to do abstracts. And um, they tend to just talk to me. And this is a purposeful... Um, I think I was doing this handheld. So I'm tr trying to, and I, I must, because I, did I have my tripod? Um, not sure. I was just, I was really trying to get the light and remove the details and just affect the, for the texture. Yeah, that's what I was, this was that. These were the moving the camera uh, and to see what I could do with the light and how it would affect that. What kind of um, would happen. Just kind of for fun. On these, on, when you do stuff like that, you have no idea. It's a lot like fluid art. You, um, uh, you would love Northwest Living, Angie. Where I don't know where you live. Hi, Sammy. Hey, you're here. Good to see you, buddy. So yeah, um, when I do photos like this, it's a lot like your fluid art, you guys. Um, you have an idea of what it could turn like. And um, <laughs> hi, Julie. I started at six, but it took me a while. And Sammy, oh my gosh, you cannot tell on me because yes you can because I cannot figure a thing out I'm, I'm like total oh my gosh you're seeing a uh, screen share on one scene because I can't figure out how to show my picture in picture and it, it, <laughs> yeah but at least like I said I was going to come back at it today but um, I didn't have a time to say today I went uh, well so I did it anyway went to see my sister and that was cool 
but back to this this images when I work like this I'm and I photograph I'm really looking to see how the light comes in and what it reflects and what the possibilities are kind of like when you do your fluid art pouring and you want to see um, like I want to see what would happen and what the motion like I'll try different motions this one obviously I I moved in kind of a, a fish hook type of mo motion this was just an up and down back and forth you can see you can see how the lights moving so it's a fun way of creating some art this was uh, this has got a reflection and the waves. Oh yeah. Here, those are the waves coming in. And yeah. Oh, I guess I'm not. I was working on all kinds of things. This one was, you know, depth of field didn't work. I, this is all out of focus up front, here and back. I, it. I would have completely needed to change some parameters of what I was doing. The particular lens I was using at the time was a DO, a diffractive optics lens, and it it's kind of known for some soft image things. But oh goody, here's one of my favorites coming up. This one I think is the raw, untitled, and um, it as I work through it. I did it in black and white and then I did it well I actually I did it in a silver kind of um, like a noir type aspect I take oftentimes we'll take things into uh, a program called silver effects pro to stim simulate what I would have done in the darkroom and back in the darkroom days uh, you could affect the the tone of a black and white image by the temperature or the type of chemical that you used and um, so this one was is has more brown to it it's a more sepia tone and this is uh, one of the pieces I have this is um, I think it's called capturing gold I'm not sure but again these are this is so much fun to go through these you guys I haven't looked at these um, no I had a uh, Julie I did um, a sh slow shutter speed and um, I actually think I did have a pretty small um, did I have a pretty small aperture on those light trails good question Let's go look. Oh, I did. Holy Ned. I had a, a half a second at F27. Now that's on a on the um, 7300. No, that was on my on my 400 millimeter DO lens that I had for a while. And uh, it was a mm, it was a beauty. Um, so yeah, those are really small aperture on that. And so that's what those all were. Those were all at half a second to try that light trail. And to try to do light trail type stuff uh, at what time of day was that? Let me check. Uh, at 5.20 in the afternoon. So at 5.20 in the afternoon on the beaches up here in the summer, which is probably what this was. Oh, no, 10.28. I guess not. 10.28 was fall. Oh, it would have been, yeah, it would have been um, getting, it wouldn't have been daylight savings times yet, but it's still, the sun would have been kind of at sunset time. So that's, you're right, Julie. Um, anyway, it it's fun to look at these. I haven't looked at this file seriously of pictures in years. Probably in three years I haven't looked at these. And... It's fun to go back and see now what I could do with them now that I do so many abstracts and what would I do with those pictures with light trails and like what would I do with this? Oh my gosh. 
Um, okay, I am going to have to code this one. So what I do when I come across an image that I think I'm going to come back to work to, I'm going to give it a number because oh, I have colors assigned um, and I'm going to give it a little bit, 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 bit. What am I giving numbers? Let me have to look, I have to look up my notes. So fives are ones that are, are I've worked on a completed. I'm going to do a three. Three is to come back to. Anyway, because this one, I, I like the diagonal aspect. I like the opposing way the water. I like Let's just see what would happen if ba -ba, we dropped the highlights that we would have if we dropped. Okay, see, that's even, I don't want that much clarity, okay? If I'm going to go abstract with something, I'm going to go abstract. And so I'm going to try this. Uh, no, don't like that. Don't want it like that. Um, then clarity could bring that way up for us. I could bring it way down in clarity. And I could bring the texture back up. The other th fun thing to do is to take it into places that we'll have to do another night. I take things into topaz and see um, what happens with them. <sighs> Okay, this is going to take some thought because I think this, I have kind of an obsession with water. So I, I, my first big exhibit that I ever did was in 2015, it was called Waters of Washington and it was at the Washington State Convention Center and I had seven pieces in there and it was, I was gone, I don't know where I was, oh I was in California I think uh, with my, my daughter and son-in-law and grandkids and I thought the exhibit was going to be coming down. It was uh, a lot of local art, Washington artists were in this exhibit. It was Waters of Washington and different ways that water has and influences us. And it was this big exhibit. And it was supposed to come down. And then the curator called me, called, sent us all messages and said, um, I got a message from the governor and he'd like to keep it up for an extra couple weeks so that he can show the exhibit to President Obama when he's in town. And I was like, what? <laughs> oh my gosh. So that was been my big claim to fame is that um, my exhibit, my things were exhibited at one point and President Obama saw them. And that's pretty cool. I, I, but I wasn't there. I was in California. I can't believe I missed it. Oh, well. But uh, so I have this obsession with things, all, all things water, and I really love to do, ooh, 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 hang on. My problem is, if I do this with you guys here, I'm going to, you load 717, okay. Okay, I'll have to go back to it. Oh, oh, okay, this one. Oh, Julie, aren't you good for seeing that number down there? <gasps> You're right. That is a nice one. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Dewey Decimal System for photos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, see this whole thing? Along? Oh, that's, that's presets. Okay, that's not that. But um, if I go back to my library, just briefly. So Sammy, this is why I'm um, getting a new Mac. You need help with Ecamm. Yes, I do, Sammy. I really do. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is my catalog for one hard drive right there. All of those little things right there, all those things. And they'll tell you that they have everywhere from 
2,948 in this file to 756 in that file to 1,283 in that file, how many ever? That's one hard drive. That's a four terabyte hard drive that's full. Uh, the family photos one is another four terabyte hard drive that has oh, not much room left on it. And then this is the new one I've started for 2021 because this guy is full and I can't put any more on him. And so I have a lot and I have a couple other drives too. So my catalog is huge, but that's okay. And let's just see if there's anything else on here that is going to go. Oh, peaches. Oh, yay. Yes. So we'll do this on another night. I'll take you into my black and white world. Um, my world in black and white. Yeah, it is. Um, what I really love to do, really love to do. This is actually not too far from our house. This is about an hour away. And um, there, it's, this is on Hood Canal, actually, if you know where it is. It's on Puget Sound. It's part of Puget Sound, but it's Hood Canal. And this one, yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. And what's this? And that's Hood Canal too. Those little Olympic mountains in the background. Anyway, and a slew right here coming through. Yep. Black and white. So you might see start to see some of the, the theme of my compositions, the lead in lines, the rule of thirds, whether I use it or not, but it's still um, and the balance of tones. My black and whites have a different kind of, of, it's just the way I like them to be. Sometimes they're a lot darker. Sometimes they go kind of crazy, but we'll see. What's this? I haven't, I haven't worked on, oh, here's one. This is kind of a fun one. The colors, you know, that really will show up and in the sunlight, if you catch it, I mean, the difference in time is, is very little difference in time on when you take it, like 517. And this is, you know, a couple seconds earlier, but the light hits things differently. Yeah, it's fun. Okay, well, now I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to drop this guy down. There we go. There we go. Um, yeah. So that's fun. And Sammy, you can laugh and you can tell me I need so much help. I know I do. Um, anyway, Angie, I hope you liked the sea star and got to see it. Um, that's what they are. They're big. I mean, big around someone. And those are the ones that are, that are at, at the shore. Uh, so you know that down deeper and out further, they can get really huge, probably out. And uh, but that's that's the beauty of the Pacific Northwest. I I love it up here. I absolutely love it. And there's endless supply of photos for me to take. Um, but um, the other thing, I'll just show you real quick, like share my screen. You might see the other thing one day I will take you to this land where I spent the best week ever with Alaska brown bears. If you want to hear about that, we'll talk about that another time. So I have gone live for almost 50 minutes. This is crazy. And some of you have stuck with me the whole time. It was a ramble. It was uh, good. It was really good. Thank you so much. This was uh, a, a great 
exercise and going back and to see my old things and what I can do. <laughs> it wasn't so successful of what I can do going live because I forgot to do, I, I didn't, I didn't not get my checklist out at all, which I actually have a little checklist, but did I, did I bother to look? No, but you know, I'll get there. You know, we always see with memory. That's a quote from David Hockney. Uh, oh, I'll remember next time. So until later, until again, I will, tomorrow night is, uh, tomorrow's Saturday. I am, like I said, I'm going to try to go live every day. I'm going to just try to keep doing this six o'clock thing. Uh, and I will hopefully try to pick up something new and I'm just going to try like see how this goes so for now that's how I'm keeping it real and uh, for the keeping it real and I hope you enjoyed this I thank you for being on my journey Julie and Angie and Gloria gosh and Sammy came and I saw Julie E yes and Oh my gosh, all you guys, it's just so nice of you, Sammy Superstar. That was super fun. And we'll give it a whirl. I'll see if I can hop on at six um, and try, see if I've learned anything else with Ecamm and can apply it or whether we're just going to ramble through another bunch of images. Who knows? But until then, everybody, like I said, keep looking for the beauty hidden in plain sight. It's all around us. And I hope that some of these images brought you some joy and my fluid art friends, maybe some inspiration and because you guys inspire me and I hope that my work can inspire you. So um, until later, you keep looking. <laughs>